I'm ready to work on the next shot, and this features the same model as the previous shot turning towards the camera. Right now I have BD5 open. Let's play this back. So what type of beauty fixes can we add here? Well, one thing that might be nice is removing the blemish on her cheek. We do that by applying a paint fix. We can also reduce the intensity of her pores on her skin by using frequency separation. Let's start with the paint fix. I'm going to go back to the first frame and insert a paint tool. I'll hover my mouse over the pipe next to the media in so it turns blue. Right mouse button click. Go to add tool, paint, paint. There's only one paint tool, but it has many different modes of operation. That's automatically inserted into the network. I'll select the paint tool. When the tool is selected, you'll see that there's a green circle around the mouse to indicate the brush size. And also there's a special toolbar added to the top of the view. The paint tool has several different brushes you can use. You can hover your mouse over these icons to see what they do. For example, there's multi-stroke, clone multi-stroke, stroke, and so on. We're going to use the stroke brush. I'll click on that, and I'll see the parameters over at the right. Now the various brushes have different apply modes. You can hover your mouse over those icons to see what they do. For example, with the stroke brush, we have color, or solid color, clone, emboss, erase, and so on. We want the clone mode. I'm going to expand the brush control section so I can see the size and the softness. I'll go ahead and increase the size of the brush a bit. I want it to be just a bit bigger than the area we want to cover up, which is the blemish. Let me zoom in. Now when you do select the clone mode, you'll see there's a X in the center of the brush icon. This indicates the point that you're sampling. In order to sample, you need to press the Alt or Option key and then click on the spot you want to sample. When you do that, the icon turns red. If you move your brush, the X stays behind to indicate the point that's being sampled. Now I can go down to where the blemish is and click drag a very short stroke. And there the blemish is covered up. Now the stroke is not visible, but you can select it. If I go back to the select tool in the toolbar and click drag a marquee over that area and zoom in, you'll see a very short red line, which is my stroke. Let's move to a later frame. You can see the stroke stays in its original position, yet our blemish is moving because the model is turning. So what we have to do is actually animate the stroke moving over time. Now what's nice is the sample point will always stay relative to where the stroke is. Essentially, the area above the blemish will be sampled throughout the timeline. In any case, I'm going to go back to frame 0 and activate animation for the stroke position. I'll expand the stroke controls and then scroll down to center, which is the position. I'll right mouse button click over center and choose animate. Now as soon as you choose animate, you'll see a second handle appear that's red. And this is actually the transform handle for the entire path. We're not really going to be using that, so we can just concentrate on the green handle where the stroke is. I'll go to a later frame, frame 3, and then click drag that handle to cover up the blemish and then go a few more frames and do the same thing. As I do that, the motion path appears. I'm going to do this for the entire timeline. Let's take a few minutes, so I'm going to do this off screen. Feel free to spend as much time as you need to to animate that stroke. I'm back and here's my initial motion path for the stroke. It's a little bit tricky towards the end when she slows down the head turn and she starts to move her jaw muscle. One thing we haven't done yet though is adjust the softness. Click off so we don't see the path adjust the softness to see the result. If I go too low, you can see the hard edge of the brush. If I go too high, the brush essentially stops the work. So slight softness above the default works pretty well. You can also readjust the size at this point if you need to. If I go a little bit larger, it works a bit better towards the end. Another thing you can do is work on the motion path after it's complete. You'll see that there's a whole section of path tools you can use. Aside from using the tools, you can also just click on the points and adjust their position or alter their tangent handles. If you need to reselect a stroke, you can always go back to the first frame, draw a marquee over that first frame location. Then you're free to move the handle for that stroke. Let's play this back. So that's working well, and now the blemish is gone. 
So the paint tool using the stroke and the clone mode is a great way to quickly fix a small part of the frame. We're now ready for the next step, which is the frequency separation. And we'll do that in the next video.